After waiting for some time, Great Yarmouth proved once again to be a good place to go. Let's see what I picked up. What could be as too many games? He has too many games. Hello guys, welcome to PS2 Mini Games. We're currently in Great Yarmouth. Uh, reason why? Finally, CXS7 I need in Great Yarmouth. Uh, actually, four things, strangely enough. One of them, a game I thought I've owned for years, but it's gone missing, so I'm just going to basically replace it. And uh, one, another game which I've been looking for for months. I mean, I mentioned at least you, like once or twice a month each time on the channel, so I think people might know what I'm looking for. And there's also some like high-end games there, but my budget is somewhat limited today, so I'll have a look at them, but I don't think we're going to grab any of them maybe i don't know depends how i feel i'm also going to hit up uh the cancer research charity shop on the edge of the town because it's massive uh probably gonna hit up so i got a cash converter such cash exchange here too because they may have something and uh well, let's try our luck today let's move on guys what the appears too many games the channel should be asking the obvious questions like why I haven't fixed these shelves yet they've been they're sagging quite badly <laughs> in all seriousness uh, I need to get the uh, bits what I'm gonna do is basically 
you know, like most people do, like half it put in the middle there and just give it more structural stability. But until, us, until I find out if we're actually going to be moving out temporarily or actually going to be staying here, I can't make that decision. So uh, I'm going to have to wait. But I'll be perfectly honest, it's starting to annoy me. <laughs> anyway, welcome to another episode of PS2 Mini Games. Uh, finally went to Yarmouth because I actually had stuff I needed. That's strictly not true. Uh, my father had a surgery that day and I had two spare hours while I was in surgery, so it's like one might as well go in the armor for like uh, see what they got. So I just went online just to see their stock levels and there was a certain game that turned up out of nowhere. I was like, I need this. I need this now. <laughs> so we uh moseyed on into the Great Yarmouth. But before we get to that, uh it's time to sort out a few things. Uh in the last episode, uh it hit me in the head. Well, it was like smashed me in the face really. Uh, the amount of language I used in that episode, unintentionally. Uh, that needs to change. It's got to a point now where I'm, I'm, I'm swearing far, far too much. <laughs> so, uh, from now on, you will, ref you will rarely if ever hear any language, and if you do, you're going to hear the uh, beep or the duck sound to cover it up. So, uh, if anyone who's been offended by any kind of language in the past like month, I apologise. I didn't realise how bad it was getting. Time to go very PG on this channel. Uh, plus we had some feedback from a couple of people that said that the language is getting a bit strong. It's like, well, that's fair enough, you have a valid point and you are correct. So anyone who, who got annoyed by the language, I humbly apologise. Uh, so from now on, the language will be kept to an absolute minimum, if not even any at all, in this episode. Uh, <laughs> let's see how long that lasts. <laughs> it's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. I'm pretty much 99% certain I'm going to be going to Oxford the gaming market. So I'm certain, why Oxford? Because uh, I've never actually been to Oxford before. They've only got like one CEX, but I can work stuff out. And uh, I prefer going to Oxford instead of Birmingham, because Birmingham's obviously a massive place. And uh, I've, driven, I've been to Birmingham three or four times, and each time the road system is not brilliant. <laughs> well, Oxford sounds like it would be much easier to navigate. Will it be a big area market? I don't know. It is close to London, so maybe. Uh, will it be will it be a large room like Leeds? I obviously hope it is, but I can't guarantee that. Uh, will we be going to Doncaster in May after going to uh, Oxford in April? I honestly don't know at this point. Once again, it all comes down to finances. <laughs> so for the next month, I will not be like saving. I won't be skin flinting, but. Uh, I have bought quite a lot in the last week, you'll be finding out about that in the like, next two to three weeks, so I will be starting to slightly save for the uh, game market, because as we all know now, because I've got to the point where I've got so many games, game markets are probably my best chance to find something I don't own. Like the obscure stuff, the obscure like cheap games no one kept, you know, that kind of thing. And the odd expensive game, now I'm gonna, gonna be there every time. Uh, simply put. <laughs> Uh, the games I have bought from Germany have arrived, some of them, not all of them, so I'm, I'm doing it in jips and drabs, so uh, you will at some point in the next two three weeks see uh, the episode from Germany, <laughs> well not from Germany, the episode from games from Germany. Terrible English speaking I am. <laughs> Me fail English? That's impossible. <laughs> yours the force, yours the force. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> back to reality. Uh, so, things are good at the channel, uh, one thing I really badly want to do is not so much change the room, like settings, like, first of all I've got like a massive pile of games of what I bought the last month that I need to file. And as I said before, filing takes quite a while because you've got to move games across to file it perfectly. It takes about an hour, an hour each time getting up and down, it sounds like sounds simple, uh, can be, sometimes it's horrific, because <laughs> once you get to the point where all your, all your shelves are like fully then you've got to like, I've got to build a new shelf and unit. <laughs> I mean, I did throw away one of the old shelving units because it was terrible. And the shelving unit is to my right right now. Uh, I wonder if I can do this. It's not there at the moment due to the fact that uh, I put it in the other house for temporarily. Uh, temporarily even, so. Gives me a perfect excuse to build a new one. And I have got some leftover wood from the last, these units, so. To be honest, I'm fixing the camera, there we go. <laughs> To be honest, uh, I like building these units. I just got... The more I build, the better I build them. It might sound like a misnomer, but it's true. I learn each time my mistakes. Depends on what kind of wood I get. This cheap stuff does the job, but it doesn't hold up. The uh, stronger, thicker wood I got from B&Q does a better job, but the problem is if you drill too hard, you see cracks in the wood where you're drilling. 
doesn't look that great, but it does actually hold vertically because the wood's so thick. You know what I mean? So I might go for B&Q wood and just learn how to learn basically how to drill properly. <laughs> so we put. Uh, I made a deal with another fan yesterday uh, online for a, a lot, a reasonably good size amount of games uh, that we coming up the next two weeks. Uh, so you got today's episode about Grey Armour, episode from Germany, an episode from a game that I bought from a fan, which is going to be quite interesting, <laughs> and other miscellaneous stuff. So we quite uh, advanced booking at PS2 Mini Games for the first time in a long time. I know, right? Planning ahead, who would have thought? And I will probably throw in the uh, peripheral episode soon because I don't want in about a month and a half. I like doing those. Uh, most of them are quite other people, so that's the issue. Uh, I've got to decide which one I want to do. I mean, I've still got to do the eye toy. The eye toy needs to happen. It's like, it's a famous peripheral for how, not so much bad, how, how bad it was, but how many they sold and the quality of eye toys. <laughs> so anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to throw an ad break in here right now, and uh, I will see you on the other side. I'm editing this one this week, so it's probably going to be a Rick Mail ad, but the man did like 12,000 Nintendo. Right, the coast should be clear by now. <laughs> Sorry I'm late, everyone. Oh, cracking! What's happened here? Where's Mike? Oh, so did the Street Fighter 2 Turbo characters turn up for the interview then? <laughs> ah, I see you're going to show off the new moves then. <laughs> Great! <laughs> Ah, that'll be the special combat speed. Uh, but did anyone experience their new fireball capability? No. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, that works then, eh? <laughs> well, if I'd known you were having this much fun, I'd never have hidden in the lavish and pretended to be late. Street Fighter 2 Turbo, <laughs> intimidating, invincible Nintendo. Shablagoo, and we're back. <laughs> uh, I might start using Shablagoo all the time now, I'm not quite sure. It's such a ridiculous f sounding word. I kind of like it. <laughs> So anyway, as I said, Great Elm have proved quite successful. Uh, a couple of these I actually picked up a month and a half ago in that live stream, the first one I ever did. But there was such like minute stuff I just have been holding on until I went back to Great Yarmouth. If that makes any sense. <laughs> uh, we shall find out. But the first thing I picked up wasn't actually a PS2 game, it was a PS1 game. The fir these first two items I picked up from the charity shop, people who actually watched the live stream would have noticed this. Uh, the original Smackdown for the PS1. Uh, reasons I picked this up, one, it was only a pound so I couldn't lose, but the actual case, no cracks, N no noticeable cracks, it it's actually in cracking condition, pun fully intended. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna, obviously with a manual on the side, so, the Passive Smackdown game was part of my childhood, part of a lot of people's childhood, so, quite good, uh, the disc looks actually in reasonably good condition for a charity shop, so, I picked that for one pound, so you can't lose anything for one pound. Well, apart from the actual pound, but what can you buy for a pound these days? There's not many things you can actually buy for less than a pound. Think about it. I mean, there's most food you can't buy for a pound, and yet you can buy a whole computer game from 20 years ago. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> so the game number two in the first PS2 game, this is the other one I got from the Cancer Research charity shop Great Armour, uh, Street Dance. This is actually a bigger buy than you realise. Uh, first of all, it's so ch it's probably, probably not even worth a pound, but I don't care. Finding super obscure games like this, which no one wanted and no one kept, is actually good because it took me this long to get this game. It hasn't been in any CX I've been to. Uh, it's one of those street games I moaned about about a week ago on that actually list. So getting this like a month ago was actually quite a big win. I can't emphasise enough some of the obscure games I've got to find that are very, that are just, no one kept them. I don't blame you for not keeping them. They were not very good games. They were the sho most shovel of shovelware. <laughs> but when you find them, it's like, yes, yes. <laughs> small wins, small wins. And some reason I'm raising the roof. <laughs> uh, you can tell I was born in the 80s. You can, you can tell I was born in the 80s. So this, I bought four, from, four games from CEX, Great Yarmouth. Uh, the first one actually stunned me. Uh, let me explain. So, this is the game I uh, owned as a child, and I uh, enjoyed the hell of it. I, play, I had multiple playthroughs of this game because actually, it's for what it is, it's a shockingly good game. Uh, I apparently have the platinum version because I realised until I looked on the shelf, I've never actually had the standalone version of this game, which stunned me, or I've just straight up lost it and never found it. But 
The original Star Wars Episode 3 game, apparently I don't have the right label. Which is still shocking to me, because I thought I finished off all the Star Wars games. No, this was the last one. The most common one was the last one. By the way, this is actually a very good game, shockingly enough. Still holds up quite strongly. I would recommend one play through this every time, because obviously it follows the story of the actual film. And uh, we've heard some side things, but the graphics actually kind of hold up. I know, shocking. <laughs> obviously, episode three, regarded probably as the best of the, of the uh, prequel trilogy. Uh, the overacting is ridiculous also, the overacting. Uh, especially from the Emperor, who's just going full ham. He's going full, full ham in that, in that film. Uh, I'm gonna have to do this, forgive me. <coughs> Unlimited! <laughs> That's ridiculous. <coughs> uh, <laughs> when you laugh at yourself, you know you you know you got nowhere to go. <laughs> oh my god, you can't take that film seriously. <laughs> and my throat's hurting right now. Uh, we're gonna uh, take a small break here. <laughs> Okay, I'm um, back. I actually did more. I actually did, my throat actually hurts like hell right now. <laughs> I need more coffee. Okay, anyway, back. Focus, focus, back. <laughs> uh, game number two for Great Apple CX. Uh, more. Sh Sean Palmer's Pro Snipeboard. Okay. Yeah, Sean Palmer, Sean Palmer's Pro Snowboarder. One of those like oval extreme sport ga games that uh, follow Tony Hawk. Between that and the BMX and like the surfing, they are the same label, all made by the same company, so they cashed in hard. I have no idea who Sean Palmer is, but I'm assuming he was quite the top snowboarder back in the day. Uh, it's made by the same people, then the graphics are going to be quite good, Activision obviously, because most of the Tony Hawk pro skater games were very, very good, with good at soundtracks. Then they kind of, then they brought out that peripheral. <laughs> Uh, probably one of the worst peripherals ever released for any console. The, uh, the skateboard for Tony Hawk. The concept was good, but in reality, no one really wanted to use it. It's because, uh, yeah, it's just, yeah. it never appealed to me, and it didn't appeal to a lot of people. Like DJ Hero, mm, didn't really appeal that much to people either. By the way, I've, we've got to get DJ Hero for this uh, for this console. That's gonna be uh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two games left, and uh, these games actually were. Well, this one was like a little good, good find. Uh, look for this, uh, Gunbird. I don't know if the special edition is always the normal edition, but Gunbird special edition apparently. Anyway, it's Gunbird. It's Gunbird. Uh, Eighteen pounds you see paid. Obviously manual and such. Uh, I have no knowledge of Gunbird, but from the back of it, it looks very much like Castle Shimigami, that like two D vertical shooter, very anime like. Uh, you don't realise until you buy them how many 2D anime shooters were on a PS2. Uh, I will actually try this because I like my uh, I like 2D vertical shooters. They, they still hold up quite strongly. Uh, we shall see how that plays, but very happy to have it. Uh, very happy to have it in the collection. So another win. <laughs> For full context, uh, the last game was the, was the only reason I went to Great Alpha CEX. Uh, also, there was a lot of expensive PS2 games there. There were obviously the, la the uh, expensive King of Fighters. Didn't have the money for that, for that to be honest. So uh, I skipped on that one. Uh, there was another game I skipped on, uh, God Hand. Uh, I resent the fact it went from like 60 to 80 powered overnight because of the manual. I've still got to get over that. Get over that. Uh, I will eventually, but it's like I still resent it. But I will have to get over it. Anyway, I skipped on that one. The main reason I went to Great House CEX was, uh, was this. F finally got Postman Pat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have mentioned it over the last six, like, six months, how hard it is to get random games like Postman Pat. So to get Postman Pat was actually a humongous win. I mean, I have been offered it by Dan the Dude a couple of times, but I say, and I apologize, Dan, it's not a case I'm not, I'm not annoying you on purpose, it's, I, I keep forgetting. Trust me, in the last week or so, the amount of people I'm speaking to on Instagram and Facebook is actually, it's like ridiculous. Uh, I didn't realize uh, at this point how many people would be willing to like sell or like give me stuff, but 
a lot. <laughs> and I'm not ignoring people. So there's a couple of gentlemen name on my Discord who was off, off me a game for a significant price, and I was like, I never got back to him. I, I didn't do it on purpose. I just legit forgot. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm legit sorry. My memory, my short term memory, is horrific. To the point where it took me ages to realize I, put, I accidentally put a hole in my guitar. It took me a month to find that out, even though I probably did it myself with a finger. Stuff like that. <laughs> but the Hair Postman Pat is a massive win. <laughs> and I'm very happy to have it. Am I happy paying £18 for a 20 year old children's game? Not so much. <laughs> but, uh,. For full collection, uh, these things I must do. <laughs> so that's pretty much this week's episode. Not a long episode, just a compact size for everyone's viewing pleasure. Sometimes going 40 minutes can be a bit, uh, well, just long. So it's nice to get things out in the first go. <laughs> for full context, I make a few mistakes because I just ad the hell out of it. There's no script. Uh, this is the first episode in a long time where I've literally made no mistakes. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I legit am so happy with myself. I literally gone through this in one go. <laughs> Win! <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe. Uh, the last episode, uh, what I've learned is demos. If I'm going to get more demos in the future, I won't give them their own episode. I'll put them with something else because uh, the majority of people who watch this channel don't really care much about demos. I fully understand that because they're demos. They're just... They're like side things. They're not. They're not part of the main event of this uh, channel. Hilariously putting it that way. <laughs> uh, so they're going to get. They'll be like side. They'll be like side episodes sometimes. Uh, I need to do another CX roulette. Uh, I tried obviously but it failed last time. So uh, got to choose the game I want to buy this time, and it's actually proving harder than you would think. Not so much the games I don't own. The games I actually want to get first. That kind of thing. Uh, I probably will do another some kind of gaming trip again in the next two or three weeks. I don't know, not a long one. Probably go back to Norwich because uh, the next long haul one will be Oxford. That, that that will most likely be happening. I believe that's the twentieth of April. But they've got a lot of things between that that is going to be interesting. Uh, car boots because the heat, the temperature has now got into a nice toasty like ten to fifteen degrees around here. Car boots you'll be seeing a lot more in the next month. I say a lot more. You'll be seeing the first one in the next month. <laughs> Uh, uh, I need to ask Dan when his next car boot is. See, the truth is, uh, I can put this. I would like to do it at the weekend, but I do a lot of work at the weekend, apparently. Um, weekends, uh, what I do to work, so. Bit of a pisser, but that's just the way it is. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. Have a good day. I'll see you on the other side. Bye.